Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at some Spydercos on the way. Uh, I have a brand new, really cool knife that uh, you may have seen me unboxing for, and then we're going to talk about my 10 favorite late night dog walking knives. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my favorite comments this week were all revolving around the unboxing of my new work tough gear, Puzan Predator Hunter Bowie. <laughs> it rolls right off the tongue. Uh, first one says, oh my God, man, I gotta have one. I knew I related to you, but this cements it. How cool is that? And that's from Bear Arms. Um, second, and Bear Arms has been chiming in a lot on Thursday Night Knives lately. Bear Arms, pleasure to have you with us. Uh, EDC for Fun also, who's been uh, showing up to Thursday Night Knives, said, uh, was quoting me, a little darkness for my sweetheart. Kids say the darndest things. Awesome knife. When I unboxed that, uh, my girls were in the room and one of them was doing the cinematography. Uh, my youngest daughter said, uh, you know, made a kind of a dark comment. She's this cute little child who's so sweet and so lovely. And she comes out with some doozies every once in a while. Uh, she said, yeah, you could probably, well, you watch the video. You can see what she said. And uh, so I appreciated that little darkness from my sweetheart. And then lastly, from N. Conway, he says, perfect for fighting the Yauja, and the Yauja are the predator species. Uh, in, in the predator universe, that's what they're called. Uh, and, and I looked it up for the uh, pronunciation, and <clears throat> sort of like Japanese, you pronounce every letter. So it's the Yauja. Uh, perfect for hunting that, the predator hunter. Now, I think that the predator hunter, which is uh, this knife right here under the knife cam, I believe that it's, uh, it's the Puzan Bowie, but patterned after the cool sort of large knife that all of the members of the Predator team had. Of course, you all know you're all knife people. In Predator, they all had the survival knife uh, with the with the sawtooth back and the and and the round handle. But they also all had that large, really cool knife that we all have coveted for years and years and years. Uh, so that's what that is based on. And man, this knife seems to resonate uh, with all of you out there, just like it did with me when I first saw Scab uh, start cutting stuff with his. So very cool knife. My first work tough gear, and I'm very excited about it. A uh, couple, of, couple of things here. I wanted to give a shout out to Have a Knife Day. Have a Knife Day uh, sent me a challenge coin. Very cool challenge coin. Have a Knife Day. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with his channel, you need to get familiar with his channel. He's a uh, former 82nd Airborne um, paratrooper who um, collects really cool knives, lots and lots of fixed blade knives. He's had a lot of Randalls recently, uh, Bowies, Sogs, and uh, sometimes he'll have them veft. He'll have the serrations put in. And he always has his cat. His cat always photobombs his, uh, his videos and shows up on the table. So uh, he sent this along, along with a couple of t-shirts and some other cool swag. I really appreciate it. Thank you, have a knife day. And uh, I'm really liking this uh, challenge coin idea. Um, maybe instead of stickers, uh, though you can't just send out, you know, three challenge coins with every box you send out. Uh, lastly, uh, this past weekend, uh, the ladies and I, my, my wife and daughters, <clears throat> went to see the Broadway rendition of Into the Woods, uh, a fairy tale, kind of modernized fairy tale um, and it was it was great. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but one thing that that really stuck out was that l the little Red Riding Hood character in Into the Woods is real sassy. You know, she's she's uh, she plays against type. You know, she's a real tough, sassy girl. And at one point, um, her grandmother, you know, behind the scenes, uh, gives her a knife that she shows up with, and she pulls it out and uh, is very cute but also very threatening she pulls it out and she says and my granny gave me this beautiful knife and the whole crowd went crazy and i'm sitting there thinking this is a room full of dormant knife junkies these people are all just dying for the social acceptance of having a cool knife themselves well i'm giving them that permission 
uh, go out there and buy yourself a cool knife because everyone wants one. Everyone needs one, whether or not they collect, you know, obsessively like you and I, or they just have one that they can rely on. I, I highly recommend you doing that. Plus the play was really awesome. All right. I think with all of that said, it might just be time for a pocket check. Had to put that poos on away because, man, is that thing huge. And I don't want to, you know, accidentally drop it or anything like that. Uh, in my pocket today, an old fave, uh, the Spyderco Military in S30V. This is your standard run-of-the-mill Spyderco Military. It's probably about 10 years old at this point. Um, but I've been carrying it. We were talking um, We were talking about this on Thursday Night Knives. And uh, I can't remember who it was. It may have been Have a Knife Day. Uh, someone said, yeah, just put down my money for this uh, pre-order of the uh, Military 2. I'm so excited about it. Um, you can do that over on Blade HQ. I'm sure you can do it other other places, but that's where I uh, put money down. $5 down on a new Military 2 uh, where they give it the compression lock, um, give it a four-way repositional po repositionable pocket clip after so many years of begging. And... Um, I'm very much looking forward to it. Still S30V, I'm fine with that, of course. You know, it's not like I've ever come up against the outer limits of S30V, but I just thought they would they would do something different, and maybe uh, put a different blade steel on there. Uh, Boohoo, first world problems, but uh, I'm really happy to have this knife uh, in my pocket pretty much always, uh, though I haven't carried it in quite a while. Uh, the the downward uh, tip pocket, the down downward tip is is still a buzzkill i'll have you know but it's not so bad the thing i was worried about today since i've so rarely care tip, carry tip down is this thing opening up in the pocket because it's so big so sharp if i reached down in there and and something snagged on it and opened it and then i pulled my hand back out it would be disaster but that's never happened to me i'm going to knock on wood it's never happened to me uh so I'm not too concerned. I'm very, very psyched about the about the new one, the new military. And I've been just kind of in a, in an odd spider co phase. I say odd because it's been a long time. Uh, ever since uh, Shane gifted Shane Gables of Edgy American uh, Channel gifted me this S110V um, Manix Two lightweight, I've just been kind of really psyched about spider co. So. Um, uh, we're going to be talking about some of the uh, some new spider coats coming up in in um, knife life news. Um, very interesting about the S110V and other super steels. Uh, Apex um, uh, Apex Alchemy uh, put out an interesting video that, uh, about S110V and the mining of the minerals that go into the super steels we love. Uh, so if you ever catch yourself bemoaning the fact that uh, well that slaves harvest and mine the uh, elements we need for our Tesla batteries. Uh, think about the the minerals and the and the elements that go into super steels. Uh, it's a it's a sobering video, but very interesting, and I'm glad he made it. Uh, next up in my front left pocket, well, it kind of goes back and forth depending on where I put my phone. Is the Havelina Jack <clears throat> from Jack Wolf Knives? This is such a great great knife. I'm I'm really loving this one. Uh, as always with the Jack Wolf knives uh, this this past year, I've carried obsessively the the knife of the month right up until probably the last couple of days of the month, and then I go back and check out other uh, older uh, Jack Wolf knives. But this one has been pretty much uh, steady and constant. This has done duty um, <laughs> uh, cutting cigars, clipping cigars for me to smoke. I've it's Lent. I've I've given up a a uh, number of my favorite things. And so it, to replace them, I've been smoking cigars and um, I do like a nice cigar, but I do not have a cigar cutter. I broke my last one. It was a cheapo. And I know I should get something cool and expensive made by a knife guy uh, like the Red Horse or something like that, but I haven't. And I find that these Jack Wolf knives actually do the trick so beautifully. The thing I don't like uh, in the past, I've clipped cigars with pocket knives and had the wrappers kind of, uh, you know, if you're not careful and if the blade isn't thin enough, uh, it can be very sharp, but if it's not thin enough, you're going to kind of 
uh, mess up the wrapper and then it leaves the tobacco on your, you know, I just don't like it uh, the way those perform. But the Jack Wolf knives are great for cigars, I have found. So this has done a lot of that. Uh, that's going to do that tonight, no doubt. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, next up is the Hogtooth and Jack Wolf Knives Nova 1. Uh, I know you've heard all about this knife because I can't stop talking about it. Uh, this is the 154 CM hollow ground clip point blade um, with a recurve. And then you have the um, linen micarta in maroon and the production model, quote unquote production model, will have uh, green liners, dark green liners. That jimping will be moved forward and my logo will be much smaller. Uh, this Big logo is for me for this prototype, and I I love it. And of course, it can't be big enough for me, but uh, I know how most people feel about billboarding. Um, so this uh, pre-order is open. Go to thenifejunkie.com/nova1. Um, this has been getting a lot of use because it's on me all the time. And I gotta say, I, I've always talked about how great Matt Chase's knife uh, knives are, especially the EDC Tanto and the Ruffian. Uh, and this is in that line, uh, just a different blade shape of my design. And it works great. I love this knife. Uh, and I know it's weird when someone designs something and says, isn't this beautiful? Isn't this great? But I guess I get where they're coming from. Um, so highly recommend this knife. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, it's been getting a lot of use and it's really practical. Yes, it looks like a little uh, a little fighting Bowie knife, but... Uh, which is a good thing, um, but it is small and it is very easy to carry and it has got utility all day long. Uh, also, stay tuned for the Nova 2 that will be, when these things are out, uh, we have another knife that will be coming out with a different blade shape, same handle, same um, size and form factor. Uh, that is the Nova 1. Um, oh, and, and all subsequent models will have different color micarta, by the way. All right. And then lastly on me for emotional support, fidgeting. That's what that means. Some people are like, what is an emotional support? You know, uh, you know how people have emotional support iguanas that they insist on bringing on the airplane. Um, by the way, there are three questions uh, that must be answered correctly to actually have something be an emotional support animal. And most of the time, people don't answer them properly. Um, what are they, you say? I cannot remember. But a, a friend of mine who owns a business uh, told me because he has people always coming in trying to bring their animals in. And uh, and it's a food related business. And I, I personally think that's totally inappropriate. You know, if you can't handle going to a restaurant without your your little furry uh, animal helping you helping you out, then you got bigger fish to fry. OK, so here on me for emotional support, you can always bring a knife to a restaurant and I have the Orion Scorpio, such a cool knife. Uh, this is uh, following in the tradition of the Solaris in terms of that handle shape and the um, geometry, maybe that's not the right exact right word, but uh, the way the lock and the flipper is set up and the button lock. Uh, David was one of the first guys to, David uh, of Blade Banter, you know, David Cam, uh, he's one of the first people I saw designing flipping, um, and I'm not using that as an expletive, but flipping button locks. Um, I know that they're all the rage right now, but really he was kind of on the on the upward crest of the of the wave, and he did it really, really well. Does it really, really well um, with the positioning? That's what I was looking for: the positioning of the flipper to the pivot um, to the lock. It just works great. This knife is a little charmer. It's small, but it has a full thickness handle, which to me makes makes small knives, uh, well, really nice to handle and and tenable. Otherwise, if they're too thin and too small, it's it's and too sharp, then it's kind of dangerous because they're hard to uh, manage. This one is great. I love the stylish clip point blade with the jimping right here on the clip, giving you giving you gription here to allow you to choose the depth of your cut. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate this knife, not only for using, but for flipping and, uh, you know, fidgeting, because we do some of that, don't we? So that's what I was carrying today on me. The uh, classic Spyderco Military 2, the Jack Wolf Knives Javelina Jack, the uh, Nova 1 from Hogtooth and, my, and yours truly, 
and the Scorpio from Orion Knives. Let me know what you were carrying on you. Drop it down there in the comments and uh, maybe I'll get one <laughs> if you think it's cool, you know, because that's kind of how I do it around here. Um, so we also have something coming up. As I mentioned uh, uh, earlier, we have something coming up uh, by earlier. I mean, on Thursday Night Knives. Uh, this week's a giveaway for the gentleman junkie is this beautiful um, Vostede Bellamy. <sighs> uh, as soon as I declared this is what we'd be giving away, I regretted it. This is my personal Bellamy uh, given to me by Vostede Knives. And I think I may have put it in my pocket once, uh, but it shows no evidence of that in the clip. Um, uh, but it has appeared a lot on this channel because it is such it is a great emotional support knife. And it is a great knife in general. It's got a three and a half inch and very fetching, if you ask me, clip point blade with that great fuller and a deep hollow grind. It's very slicey, um, very, very sharp and thin behind the edge. And you have carbon fiber. Um, and that, that blade is M390, if I haven't mentioned it. M390 and carbon fiber with this amazing action and a hollow grind. It's like it's like 150 bucks or something. It's It's such a deal. Um, great knife all around. I love Vostede. Um, they've sent me four knives in the past. One of them is a kitchen knife. I've kept that. This one I'm giving away and, uh, and there will be others in the future, but, uh, just really dig their knives. This one has three modes of opening. You've got the regular flipper, you've got the back, the, the top flipper, and then you have the fullers. So uh, if you're interested and you're interested in supporting the show, this is a good time to sign up uh, for uh, to become a patron, a gentleman junkie. Uh, you stand to win this tomorrow night on Thursday Night Knives. And as Jim just flashed up on the screen, we do have an affiliate link with um, Vosteed. So if you bought a Vosteed knife by following our affiliate link, the knifejunkie.com slash Vosteed, uh, we we get a small fraction of that of that purchase, and that helps support the channel. Uh, so I urge you to do so. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at some uh, stories in Knife Life news, and then we're going to get to the cool new knives I have here. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. I really ought to just keep my eyes closed during that liner because every week it's something new and every week it's something I should have, you know, just for you all so you can experience those knives. Uh, it's kind of a moral imperative and a responsibility on my part, uh, but I'm willing to carry that mantle. Okay, first up in Knife Life News, uh, we've got uh, some Spyderco news and I'm very excited about, uh, especially the second story, but this first one is cool for all you parents or military nut jobs. Uh, they're coming out with, now these are two stories here, this one and the next one, that are coming out of Amsterdam. You know, the, the annual Amsterdam meet a Spyderco collector. Uh, I, I believe that that's who sponsors it. I, I, I'm never quite sure how that goes, but you're always getting this news from the Amsterdam meetup from Spyderco collector. So uh, Magna Cut, paramilitary too. So this is for the SALT series. You know the SALT series? of uh, folders and fixed blades from Spyderco. Uh, they're optimized for humid, salty, you know, uh, maritime environments. In the past, they've used H1 steel, which claims to be rust proof, and LC200N, which claims the same. Well, MagnaCut uh, doesn't officially call itself uh, rust proof, but it is <laughs> mostly, uh, from anecdotal evidence, it's a great anti-corrosive steel, as well as everything else, because the genius uh, Laren Thompson created it. Uh, so this uh, this will have uh, this will be a, a latest edition in the Salt series, uh, Magna Cut. It will have this interesting rippled G10 texture, which is obviously evocative of water, but also some of the past uh, salt 
series knives. Uh, really looks nice to me. Um, and this is a cool sort of harbinger of, of things to come. Uh, as er Eric Lesser says, he wants to make all of the USA made salt uh, in a salt version. So that would be the military, that would be the native, um, the para two, is that made or the para three? Um, I'm not sure if that's made in the U S but he wants to make all the U S uh, folders into salt series, which probably means in Magna cut, which is probably very exciting to a lot of steel nerds out there. So very much looking forward to that. Um, but I'm really looking forward to my military too. I'm just going to keep saying it. When's it coming? When's it coming? You have my $5. Uh, I want it. Okay, next up in more Spyderco news. This one's exciting to me uh, because of this lightweight uh, Manix Two. I'm 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 really liking the lightweight <coughs> um, context or the lightweight models that they're putting out. Coming up will be the Native Chief lightweight. The Native Chief is the four inch plus um, Native. You know, this is the 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 largest of the native series and i think the most beautiful and i had it for a short while when it first came out in s30 v and it was great but i wasn't carrying it enough and i sold it and yes it's one of those uh, things i regret but maybe i'll just get this one because it's going to be lightweight at 2.96 ounces which is a savings of one ounce uh, pretty much exactly from the g10 and steel liner lock version or um steel frame um backlock version and uh, it's going to be in cts bd1 which is a totally adequate steel i say totally adequate because uh the steel nerds who are going crazy about the magna cut uh, story are, are going oh bd1 but you know let's face it it's fine for pretty much all of us uh so bd1 is a less expensive steel it's not a powder metallurgy steel so hopefully um this will affect the price and and keep it cheap uh, but we're not so sure. Um, and, and an interesting thing, uh, just an interesting note about this knife. Uh, we had company this past weekend and, uh, the guy, the, the man of the couple always likes to check in with my knives. He has a small uh, collection, but is definitely not a knife nerd. And, and I showed him this and he was like, oh man, this is so cheap. This is this plastic and this clip. Obviously this is just, and I was like, hmm. Well, the blade steel is pretty. And he's like, mm -hmm, yeah, it just feels cheap. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. It's an interesting take from a non-knife person. Oftentimes uh, we forget to a non-knife person, uh, weight means something. Um, and, and I think the plastic handle, FRN, threw him off a little bit, but definitely the weight. I've handed people heavy knives before and, and they've commented on the weight as some sort of indicator of quality and you know we know it's not uh but just an interesting take from a non-knife guy on a really really exquisite knife <laughs> uh okay next up from giant mouse they have a new one in their ace lineup and the ace lineup for giant mouse is sort of their um meeting the the audience halfway with with less expensive knives now they all hover around 200 dollars uh, so if that's less expensive to you well, bully, that's awesome. Uh, but, you know, it's still a $200 knife, but that's just a reflection of how much their regular uh, knives cost. So Ace lineup, new one, the Atelier. Um, this is, a, first of all, I love the shot with the with the beautiful leather bag and the, and the tweed hat. Very, very nice shot here. But this is uh, basically a small version of the Ace Grand uh, with that beautiful harpoon clip point uh, full height, uh, flat ground, bl ground blade, and that profile of the handle. This is just a smaller version at 2.87 inches uh, in blade length. And that's Elmax steel, which is exciting. Uh, everyone loves the Elmax. And it's going to come in a green micarta version and then in this milled titanium version, both liner locks. And uh, I, I've been loving titanium liner locks over the past year. Uh, refreshing change from from frame locks, especially when it comes to deployment. A beautiful looking knife there. Um, repositional pocket clip. This thing is available now, actually. You can just go and check it out right now and buy it. Uh, next up, I wanted to show off a couple of cool little Rosecraft knives. 
well, it's one, but it comes in six different versions, six different colors. And it's called the Awanata, the Awanata. And it's a little keychain knife, uh, three inch handle, two inch blade um, of D2. Very nice little sheep's foot, worn cliff blade uh, with a pull fuller. It's a non locker. And it's just a little cute knife to have on your keychain for, um, you know, those little things that come up or you know, little situations that might kind of come up for light cutting where you're not going to be deploying whatever the knife is you have on your belt or in your pocket. Uh, as I mentioned about this knife I've uh, and, and other colorful knives, like I'm thinking of the Spyderco Roadie, they look great when you have them all together. You know, any one of these would be cool on the keychain just with the color that they exist in. But when you put them all together, they really look like a complete set. So this is the kind of uh, knife that could be very collectible. Looking forward to that from Rosecraft. I'm also just looking forward to checking out a Rosecraft. I have a sneaking suspicion. Uh, I, I want to get Swags on the show. I'd love to talk to her about this, um, about this company uh, that she's a part of. But something tells me that they're made by... Uh, the same factories who do Rough Riders. And I don't know if it's a font thing or what it is, but I just always get that that feeling. And, and I'd love to have that confirmed one way or the other. So uh, check out the the new keychain knife, the Awa Nata from Rosecraft. All right, lastly in knife uh, life news is a very cool story um, from the wider world, from outside the knife world. A giant seven-foot demon slayer uh, knife uh, sword was found in a 1600 year old Japanese tomb in Tomi Omaru Yama. Uh, it's the Tomi Omara Yama mound in Nara, Japan. Uh, this thing was found in a tomb. Uh, it's made of iron. And you might be asking, what is a demon slaying sword? Well, a demon slaying sword is a sword that uh, a Japanese warrior or um, royal was buried with to fight off demons in the afterlife and they were usually quite big but this is the biggest ever found at seven feet long that's that's a full 11 inches taller than i am okay i'll be honest 11 and a half inches taller than i am and i think that's really cool uh very important person this must have been no doubt but it seems like if you do a little search pretty much every week or every other week or so, I'm I'm finding stories about swords and knives that are being found uh, from um, archaeological digs, and it's it's really I don't know. It activates my imagination how cool it is to find something uh, that old um, with the purpose that we all love in mind, and not necessarily the demon slaying, but the blade thing. You know, we know how old knives are and, and swords are, but when you when one is actually dug up and is historically uh, significant, it's it's always exciting to me. So uh, that is the giant seven-foot demon-slaying sword found in Japan. How cool is that? All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at two really awesome knives, a study in contrast uh, that showed up on the same day this past week, and then we'll look at uh, favorite late-night dog-walking knives. But before we do, I just want to remind you that if you are interested in getting this, uh, winning the Vostid Bellamy, where'd it go? Vostid Bellamy um, tomorrow night on Thursday Night Knives, you'll want to become a Gentleman Junkie at Patreon. Just go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon and sign up there. You could also zap the QR code at the tip of this blade. Again, go check it out at thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a Knife Junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkie's merchandise at the knifejunkie.com slash shop. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So it's rare that it happens that uh, I'll feature a story in Knife Life News and then the company reaches out to me and offers to send me one. Who knows? Maybe Spiderco will reach out to me and Giant Mouse after this last one. Uh, but uh, after discussing the best tech beehive, 
uh, they they asked if they could send me one, and indeed I said yes. Look at this beauty. Um, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, was it two weeks ago? I guess uh, this is the fourth in the boutique in the bouquet series. Sorry, uh, designed by Ostop Hell for Best Tech Knives, uh, all flower inspired, and uh, this is inspired by the Palalu leaf, and. I just love this wicked little thing. And it is little. Uh, make no mistake here. Just just for size reference, here's the tiny little penguin uh, that they came out with recently at QSP. It's even smaller than that. But very potent with that um, leaf, uh, Palalu leaf-inspired blade shape, that hawkbill blade. And the handle is very comfortable. And if I use that choil, believe it or not, I can get... I can get nearly a full finger grip, a uh, full hand grip on this, um, but it is tiny. And, and I do have medium sized hands, which I can cram into a small glove sometimes, and then sometimes require a large glove, depending on the manufacturer. So um, I guess truly medium hands, uh, but I can get that full finger grip within that ergonomic handle, uh, which positions the tip below your knuckles. Uh, great for utility, small utility jobs, pull cuts, opening boxes, that kind of thing, but also uh, is being used a lot, uh, according to Ostop Hell, by some of his friends for gardening, uh, which is apropos uh, the the design inspiration. But you can also see how pull cutting and using this to, to prune would be very nice. A lot of pruning knives are that shape, that hawkbill shape, and it it's good for reaching through the bramble and grabbing that stem and then pulling towards you and cutting uh, and trapping the material, trapping the stem uh, between the ricasso and that hawkbill tip. Um, just a charmer. I love this little knife and I love the uh, the blue color, the cheerful blue color. You know, I, I like the storm cloud blue, the thunderhead blue uh, TM, uh, but I do also like the cheerful uh, sort of blue. Now this is inspiring me to get the the push dagger. What is it called? The one that that is a part of this bou uh, bouquet series and has a little. It's not a it's not a dagger, but it's like a push knife. Um, I want to get that one now because I think it's very small, like this, and has a very small blade. It's just positioned more in that uh, perpendicular um, mounting. So same day that this arrived. By the way, thank you, Best Tech. I will be doing a review of this one. And it will be positive. Spoiler, spoiler alert. You may have noticed I don't really put up negative reviews. It's if I feel negatively about a knife, which isn't doesn't happen so frequently because I don't have tons of companies sending me knives. And I also don't buy knives I don't think I'm going to like. Uh, but if I really don't like one and I can't remember that ever happening recently, uh, I'm not going to put up a, a thing to bash it. I just won't highlight it. That's all. Um, but on the same day that this arrived... This arrived. Look at this. Look at this contrast here. Here is the Work Tough Gear Puzan Predator Hunter Bowie. There, I got it all out. So uh, the the Puzan Bowie by Work Tough Gear, we've seen uh, a lot of. Um, I've never handled one, but a lot of our our friends have them and talk about them. Um, Scab, uh, for instance, uh, has been showing that off a lot from on the Choir Boys Cutlery Channel. Uh, as well as many others. Um, but this is the second run of the newest version of the Puzan Bowie because there are a couple of different versions of it. And it is a monster. It is an absolute monster. Um, I'm going to hold it up in front of my face so you can see. Look at this thing. Wow. It, it, it almost makes the Natchez Bowie. It's about the same. It's a little bit longer, but the blade is about the same. But it almost makes it seem diminutive uh, by comparison, just because of how broad that blade is. And man, do not be um, fooled. This is incredibly sharp. I uh, am, I have posted a, a short of me throwing up a piece of paper and swiping at it. And it's kind of dumb and dangerous, but it it, it is so sharp, it cuts the paper, you know, without any support from you know, holding it. Um, I'm going to put this down now because it's so heavy I can barely heft it just kidding it's about a two pound knife with the sheath it's it is no shrinking violet that is for sure um cool thing about this is I 
I remember looking at that guard and thinking, mm, that might hurt, but it's so nicely chamfered. Uh, you can see I'm, I'm uh, whacking into everything here, but it's so nicely chamfered. Let me stop this camera from shaking. It's shaking in fear of this predator hunter. So nicely chamfered that you can uh, use it fully uh, with without any issue. It is very comfortable in this uh, choked up position. It's also very comfortable back here in sort of the uh, regular um, uh, saber grip. And then also choked all the way back in the bird's beak pommel. It is very, very comfortable. Now, why is it called the Predator Hunter? Well, I, I don't have confirmation on this, but I'm pretty sure it's inspired by the big knife that that everyone carried in uh, in Predator. So uh, it is uh, quite a beast. It's what is the blade steel here? S SK85, which I believe is a high carbon steel. An interesting note here. It is very well finished. Definitely when you look at the handles, beautifully sculpted. Uh, the, the blade itself is very well finished. Um, you, you do see <clears throat> a little bit of slight machine chatter right here uh you know on the um on the tang just a little bit uh, on the underside um not enough to feel not enough to look bad in any way but you can see the history there a little bit which i actually find kind of cool uh, but also this top is is 90 degrees it's got a 90 degree spine for throwing sparks uh which i have no doubt would do very well However, on this side, on the, um, I don't know if that's the show side, but on the on this side of the blade, there's almost like a little burr on the spine. When they were grinding it, flattening the spine, there's just a slight burr you can feel. I mean, I can scrape off fingernail there. So what I'm going to do is just run a piece of sandpaper over that a few times and knock that down. Uh, but I found that interesting, a little, little, uh, a uh, little bit of unfinishedness to this, but um, it, that in no way takes anything from this knife. Now, I am not sure what I'm going to do with this knife besides just cut stuff, like just chop stuff for fun. Um, it, it it really, it has very little, um, like for me, it's not a fighter. I mean, you could certainly do plenty of damage with it, but it's it's too heavy and too broad for, for me to think of this as a fighter. It's just more like a, an alpha knife, you know, it's just, it's just the big boy on the block that pushes everyone around or just scares them with his size. That's what this is. And it's got such a cool design and I've always wanted one of those predator knives. And this kind of fits the bill uh, nicely, even though, even though it doesn't really look too much like it, it's that tip that is evocative of it. And that swedge, nice, long, fuller, very cool knife. You got the the beautiful liners there and the I love the handle so nicely sculpted and shaped work tough gear man really really cool stuff uh coming out of Taiwan and they're small batch small batch production knives they almost I don't know they're almost I don't know they almost vibe as custom knives in a, in a strange way just with how they're released and how they're made very excited about that and to check out other uh, work tough gear knives in the future. All right. The moment you've all been waiting for the late night dog walking knives. Now I'm going to, I'm going to give you a couple of parameters, some, some, some parameters to this categorization. Uh, late night dog walking. Uh, I oftentimes will put in earbuds. I know bad idea, <clears throat> but uh, we don't have a lot of cars driving through the neighborhood, uh, especially late at night. Um, and I always have what I'm listening to low enough that I can hear my own footsteps and hear the the jingle of the dog's tag and that kind of thing. And so that leads me to believe that I have uh, that I can hear pretty well. But still, uh, you know, I worry about I worry about things just like you do. And uh, yes, I'm usually listening to something spooky in my headphones because it's kind of fun to walk around in the dark listening to something spooky. But um, I really have the knives on me, not for spooky things or for spooky people. Um, of course, they would work well on spooky people, but I'm more concerned about other dogs or other animals. We do have a lot of foxes around here, and there was a fox found to be rabid not too far away. Um, and 
something that you'll hear if you listen to this week's interview uh, really uh, confirms kind of how I think of things. Like if there's a dog attacking your child or your dog and you have a, a pistol on you, you're probably not going to want to shoot because A, you're out in the middle of the neighborhood. And but also, how do you get a clean shot? Uh, it, it would be a lot more difficult than uh, I would imagine this is all in my imagination. Hopefully it remains there, but then it would be to um, stick a stick a dog with a knife because that way you're, you're, there's less risk of the bullet flying somewhere and hitting an unintended target chief among them, uh, whatever's being attacked that you love. So this is what goes on in my brain. Um, Take it or leave it. All right. First up in this category of, uh, of no, oh, plus almost all of them, except for one, uh, are dark blades. Um, I, I do prescribe to the to the um, notion that a knife should be felt and not seen. And man, when you're when you're in a dark car, for instance, or just out at night, there is a marked difference between a dark blade and a silver color blade. So first up in this list is the Off-Grid Knives Stinger XL. Uh, coming from Off-Grid Knives, Taiwan manufacturer, they have uh, they do knives with Best Tech and then a uh, Taiwan manufacturer that just does amazing work. This is a full four inch spear point blade. Such a nice knife. It's like a, a real evolution for Off-Grid Knives. Uh, the handle is nicely contoured you don't have any squared off edges or any rough textures, uh, which um, might be uh, included in some of the older models, but this is so refined. It also looks great and has really nice action. Uh, but for a tactical knife, uh, this, this really hits all the points. It's got the size. It's got great stabbing ability or thrusting, let's say thrusting, because that is probably the most important thing for a tactical knife to have. Uh, this may be um, a polarizing opinion, but um, thrusting is known. It was known to the Roman army. And so uh, it still works today, still stands today. Thrusting is the best way to stop a threat. Uh, slashing, you know, no doubt will discourage someone, but it doesn't have the physiological stopping power uh, that a thrust will have. So this is great at that. Um, it also has a deep carry pocket clip and comes in a fully blacked out version. That is the off-grid Stinger XL. Next up, if I am feeling slashy, uh, you're gonna, I'm gonna wanna do it with this because of its deep, deep recurve blade. This is the Knights, uh, the Jason Knight Elements MK Ultra. It's made by Fox. And now I think you just buy it straight from Fox. But when I got this, uh, it was a limited edition that was coming out from Tactical Elements, the website that does some really cool uh, limited edition knives. This knife, very much a Jason Knight design. That blade, that fuller uh, are all signature uh, and the harpoon um, kukri shape. Signature shapes of um, Jason Knight's work and a perfectly done folding version of his kukris, but also to me, the most kukri-like of the kukri folders to include the Raja 2 by Cold Steel. I think this one really captures the shape, the look, and the spirit of the kukri best of all the folding kukris I've, I've uh, experienced. It also is great on a thrust. Uh, people don't think of kukris as thrusting implements because of the off angle of the blade to the handle, but uh, most thrusts, like uh, just a straight thrust in this way, uh, that sort of pistol grip shape allows you to put that point where you want it without having to cant your wrist too much. Whereas if you have a straight blade, you got to cant your wrist the the point is already pretty much where you want it. Now, I have found in doing some of the collie stuff I like to do, uh, if you're coming around this way, you might have to cant your wrist a little bit more. Uh, but on most thrusts, it's gonna be it's gonna be right where you want it. Great handle. This is a micarta, very grippy micarta, and then it's also got a, a shape perfect for maintaining 
your grip and keeping it in your hand with that swell at the bottom. Um, yeah, love this knife. And then, and then instinctively, I'm more of a slasher that that hollow grind's going to really going to do it in spades. So, uh, the MK ultra definitely, uh, high up on my list. Um, half of these are, uh, less than half of them are folders. Uh, and then the rest are fixies right here is, I guess I could say any one of my, um, any one of my Emersons, but this is the Emerson I always go for the tiger. Uh, it is all blacked out, but the ergonomic, um, CQC 13 handle upon which this is built is the most to me, the most secure, um, of the, of the Emerson handles. And I, I have a number of them and they're all nice, no doubt. I mean, I have the CQC 13, but the blade is shiny. So, um, this is the one I, I gravitate towards most. This is a single detent, uh, Emerson, you know, they changed, I think about 2016, they started going to the single detent. They used to have a, uh, a secondary detent right up here, um, apparently for keeping it closed, but it did not do its job very well. Cause you could always shake out an Emerson blade. Um, I love the generous wave on this. You are not missing that wave. As a matter of fact, most Emersons, you're not missing the wave, but for this one, if I want to pull it out of my pocket without waving it open, I have to consciously grip it like this to keep the blade shut. Uh, chisel, chisel edge on this is so wickedly sharp. Chisel edges are just nasty, nasty, wicked sharp. And uh, also track a little bit differently through organic material. I don't want to get too, too, too gross about it, but it does things to either side of the cut that, that, that make the cut worse. Um, and you can see that in an old CMFW, uh, uh, what was that? CM video, uh, my, um, Matthew Freeman video. He, he actually shows off the difference between a chisel edge and a V edge cutting through leather. And it's, it's rather grim. Uh, but I love this one because of the, the deployment for the late night, uh, dog walking surprise. All you have to do is wave it out of your pocket and it's good to go. So a big, big one here. Um, also, um, somewhat pocketable in the summer, also in, in shorts, all, all of these kind of are, are, are that except for some of the larger fixed plates. Next one here is definitely my favorite winter folder for, for the purpose. This is the, uh, Voyager XL. This one happens to be a signature series. Um, but it's the, the Vaquero with the serrations. And of course you can get this in the, um, just the regular version, uh, which is available for like, I don't know, 75 bucks in, in OS 10. This is in CTS XHP steel. And, uh, it's got that wicked Yatagan shaped blade, uh, with a deep, deep recurve, but, but the point right down center line. So you kind of always know where it is. Um, no matter how your hand is oriented. Why do I love this for winter? Well, because that deep recurve with the serrations is going through leather. It's going through puffy, big puffy jackets like they're not even there. But I mean, it's it's really, it has wicked, wicked bite. Heavy canvas, Carhartt style jackets. It's, it's not even going to know it's there. Uh, this one has a snaggletooth MF on it. So you can just wave it out of your pocket. Um, to be totally honest, I don't like how it looks, but this isn't about looks in this case. I also don't like the giant uh, second grade teacher signature that Lynn Thompson has on that blade, but I've gotten used to it. I love, I always mention that, I love his signature. It looks like, um, well, it looks like a second grade teacher's uh, signature. And he's such a, you know, he's so much not like that. It's It's a little bit of dissonance and I like that. Great grip on this thing that allows you to come all the way back here for standoff distances and still allows you to thrust very, very well because that curved handle nestles in the pommel, but also these finger grooves allow you to get good grip if you're going to be swiping and slashing. Uh, great, great late night dog walking knife, but I got to say probably all of the large cold steels could fit into that category, um, but but I would keep it to the serrated. Why not? Um, 
Okay, now we're going to get into the fixed blade knives. And this is one that uh, I've been carrying a lot recently because it's new and I'm very excited about it. Um, but this is if you're just, for me, this is a grab and go dog walk knife because it, it's got the utility of a folder and that it just sits right in your pocket, but it's got the, it's got the power of a fixed blade. This is the Amtac Northman, um, a knife that also comes with a trainer. I don't have it around me. Um, so that you can practice taking it in and out of your pocket. This is intended to be a pocket knife. Uh, not an in the waistband knife, not a, a belt knife, but a pocket knife. Now you can put it in those other positions, but I would caution against it. Um, because of the tightness of your waistband when drawing it, you're likely to cut the waistband. This one, I opted for the, um, serrated version. This was a gift from my father and he asked if I wanted the serrated or not. And believe me, I'm, I'm sure you can imagine how I hemmed and hawed. Ooh, I don't know. And back and forth. And I finally, I'll take the serrated. It's a small blade and uh, that can really help accelerate cuts. And um, this is M390 and it's not like I'm out in the wilderness using it all the time. So it'll probably never need sharpening and probably never actually need those serrations, but they do bite. And if you look at the slant of that blade towards the tip, um, you know, it might be good to have some bite on it just in case it, it glances away. Uh, sculpted G10 handle scales, very comfortable with that thumb, thumb rest on top. You can really cap the, the thumb there. This is intended to be an all purpose, uh, tactical and just outdoor everyday carry, uh, style knife. It's got a ferro rod built right into it. It's got a 90 degree spine for throwing sparks. This uh, discrete carry concept style clip, I'm not sure if it is, but it's very much like it, is permanently mounted in that position, unlike many uh, Kydex sheaths where you can reposition that. Um, but uh, for this, great. It's, there's there's going to be no disarming this knife. And if you had to dispatch an animal, uh, I think this right in would go right through the noggin without any any issue whatsoever. Um, heaven forbid you're attacked by a rabid fox. Uh, you know, this might be the thing. Uh, but if you have a sword cane, that might help too, just to keep it away from you. Uh, sword canes are pretty awesome. This uh, is designed by Bill Rapier, who's a former Navy SEAL, and uh, all that that implies. All right, next up is a wicked one. This is this is uh, one that if you're ever if if you're ever uh, busted by the cops and you're wearing carrying this they might not believe you that it's for work but this is the JB knife and tool ditch pick they have a number of models and then they have a number of those models in the ditch lineup the ditch means that it's thinner so this is a 16th of an inch thick blade steel very very thin and quite flexible and very strong especially for the thinness of it um, double-edged Pical style, uh, knife, I guess if it's double-edged, it, it, it's technically not Pical style. It's just a curved double-edged blade, but, but these are normally Pical. And, uh, and when this run came out, he was offering different edge, uh, types, uh, bayonet style and double-edged and single-edged. Of course I had to go for the double edge. Uh, the grip is fantastic. It's, it's the, uh, textured peel ply textured G10. Uh, which is very grippy. And then the the profile of the handle itself fits in the hand perfectly and, and is really optimized for this reverse grip. This would also be a great uh, um, stabbing, tearing kind of thing. Um, would take very little effort. And since it's so thin, it's going to just slip through whatever is it's being pulled through. Um, so this one gets a lot of carry, a lot of play. On, on those late night walks. And oftentimes with these uh, knives, especially the, the, well, exclusively the fixed blades, I can hang them upside down in CM style carry under my, under, my, um, under my belt so that the handle projects downward like this and I can just pull it out. My preferred, my normal, my normal uh, preferred style of carry is in the waistband like this, but if you're if you're wearing a jacket and you think you might need it and you don't want to have to unzip your jacket and fuss for it, 
uh, carrying it downward, if it's got a good uh, retaining sheath, is a great way to go because you can just pull it out that way or you can pull it out normal grip if you just put the uh, the palm out. All right, next up, this is one that's probably gotten the most uh, outdoor play or, or late night dog walking play and early morning, and that is the Street Bowie by Fred Perrin, designed by Fred Perrin and produced by Spyderco. Just a great, great, Bowie shape. You've got the integral <clears throat> finger groove here, which acts as the guard. I guess the integral part is the guard. It's uh, integral to that groove. And the shape of the groove is important here. It's not just a semicircle. It is, uh, it is um, asymmetrical. And it, it actually puts the knife in a position where the tip is perfectly center line and also uh, the edge is slightly downward canted in that grip, which adds to the ability, the, the cutting and shearing ability. Speaking of shearing, it's a full flat ground blade, uh, VG10, very, very sharp, and I've made it even more so. And it happens to be a great knife for uh, no spin knife throwing. So at about, I don't know, eight to 10 feet, I can whip this into a, into a board, the throwing board we have outside in, in this style. Like this, you throw it and it comes out and travels straight. It's really good for that. Uh, I've thrown it a couple, tried it a couple of times um, uh, further back and do, doing one spin. And I haven't quite, I haven't quite gotten to the point where I'm willing to throw it with abandon. I, I think it would have no problem holding up seeing as it's uh, molded, you know, the handle is molded around the tang, but, but still uh, this is uh, more of a, no spin, close up thrower for me. Uh, great uh, in the reverse grip. That's how I carry it. Uh, tip down, edge out. And then I have the fob there because in practicing pulling this out of the pretty loose sheath, I mean, it, it, it comes out of the sheath pretty easily. That's why I've kept this uh, sheath instead of making a new one. It is pretty big. Uh, I would glance off the top because there's no sort of bird's beak to catch your, your hand. So I'd put that there just to grab in case. And it works fine. And it looks kind of cute. You know, it's like that happy, cheerful uh, pink on a, on a black knife. Oh, that's, uh, I mentioned the throwing before. That's why the tip is all worn like that from throwing into wood. All right. This has been uh, one I've been carrying a bit lately. Actually, these last three. Um, this is the Zabo. Express by Tops Knives. Um, it's got a great sheath, and I love this clip that some of the uh, Tops Knives are are shipping with now. Instead of the repositional, uh, rotational clip, which kind of sets the knife away from your belt about I don't know three quarters of an inch. Not not as fond of that as I am of this. Uh, great sheath here, but look at this knife. You're like, yeah, we've looked at it. You've shown it to us. Well, this makes a great late night dog walking knife, especially in that handled down um, carry method I was talking about because of the way it swells out at the bottom of the very neutral handle, which I like and is not um, not really very signature of Lacey Zabo. Lacey Zabo, the designer of this, frequently has very ergonomically locked in handles uh, where your hand has to fit in a certain way. This is quite neutral, but that nice swell and bird's beak right here allows you to, to draw it uh, with, with surety, um, especially in that downward position. <clears throat> 154 CM blade steel made in the USA. Uh, it comes in single-edged or double-edged. I prefer the double edge. And looking at this, at first I thought it was a dagger. I was kind of loosely calling it a dagger. Uh, but it's more of a fighter because of the asymmetry of the top grind and the bottom grind and the profile. Uh, and, and for some reason, I'm able to see that clearly when I look at it upside down. When I look at it right side up, um, it looks more of a like a dagger to me. But yeah, this is a fighter. It's got great quillions here. You've got the uh, really nice jimping on the back of this quillion, uh, which is important because you do not want your thumb running up onto that secondary edge very nicely sculpted micarta canvas micarta handles with a handsome red liners there love this knife this is also my current 
one of my current bedside knives. Yeah, this is the one that's not in the drawer. Um, okay, second to last here. This has gotten tons of play ever since I got it. This is the Ruffian from Jack. Uh, don't do that. Hogtooth knives. And uh, it is so nice for the thrust because of that swedge. That harpoon swedge comes all the way down to the tip, making the tip rather dagger-like and diamond in cross-section. And then it's just got a wicked relief edge uh, at the at the base of this thinly hollow ground blade. This is a uh, a wicked wicked cutter, uh, but also thruster. And if you look at the point, you'll see it's it's slightly below the line of the two screws. So it's like slightly below midline, uh, which also makes it pretty good if you want to use it in a utility sense, if you want to use that tip. But that's not really what this is optimized for. Uh, called the Ruffian. And with that tactical look, it is, uh, well, it is a good all-arounder, but it does excel at at the sort of tactical uh, usage. You got the um, Really nice jimping there and beautiful blue liners on mine. This is a custom and uh, really nice micarta handle scales with this Anzo pattern in milled in. That Anzo pattern is so nice. It feels good and it also just locks your finger in, uh, your fingers in. Also, you see the choil and the swell at the bottom of the handle. I mean, the ergonomics on this are so sure and so positive. Uh, I do believe you could have wet hands and and go to town with this and never never worry about it coming out of your hands uh i love the deep hollow grind too this is the ruffian from hogtooth knives uh let's see one i guess yeah it's the only custom no, no i'm sorry it is one of two customs in this list and this last one is also a custom newest of all of these is the dirk pinkerton razorback and i had this one double-edged as well and this is the only one that's shiny, uh, but I just can't resist this sometimes. It also carries really well upside down uh, in that CM style carry and has this neutral handle that just works perfectly. It's not too big and not too small. It's the perfect, perfect size um, and, and perfect neutrality. It swells towards the um, pommel, giving you uh, that sort of retention, but also is curved nicely it fits the thumb well and it also if you're going to wear it in the waistband uh does not poke the ribs badly you know it doesn't it's not uncomfortable on the ribs deep deep hollow ground uh grind on some relatively thin steel this is l -Mac. yeah l max he he lists it right there and um based on the kanjar from the middle east so you've got a top hooking sort of hawk bill blade and then on the bottom you have an up upswept Bowie style blade. So together, uh, the, those two factors make this utterly wicked and um, makes me feel very confident when I'm walking around with this late at night with the dog. The dog also helps. Argo, what a sweetie. I should have put a picture up of him. Wasn't thinking about that. All right, so that's my list of dog walking knives. And uh, let me know, do you carry certain knives when you take your dog out late night for a walk. Maybe you don't have a dog. Maybe you just go out late night. Maybe you're taking the garbage out to the end of your half mile long driveway or something like that. What do you carry? What do you carry late at night? It's, uh, I don't know, something, something interesting to consider. Uh, also, whether you're going to have a blacked out blade or not, um, you know, you're going to go commando style. All right. Thank you for joining me on this uh, version of the Knife Junkie podcast. It's so great to have you here with us. This, by the way, is episode 400. So uh, if you've watched all 399 preceding podcasts, I thank you. And if you haven't, well, it's time to start catching up. Thanks for joining us. And for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. 
Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.